Motion problems are solved using one variable in chapter three. Often these problems are easier to solve using two variables and sometimes they can solve only by a systems of equations. And then they remind you of the basic formula, rate times time equals your distance. So rate multiplied by your time equals your distance, okay? So let's talk about what this uh, kind of looks like in this chapter. If you look at the top of the next page, um, rate, that is just if nothing else is affecting it. So if we have nothing else affecting the vehicle, that will be the vehicle's rate. But sometimes, like with an airplane, you have what's called a headwind and you have a tailwind. You need to know these terms because a headwind actually blows against the airplane. So you can take whatever the airplane is doing, and we're saying that wind is 25 miles an hour. And if it's blowing against the airplane, then you're gonna subtract that 25 miles an hour from however fast the airplane is going on its own. But if that wind is blowing tailwind, meaning it's blowing from behind the airplane, it's actually helping it. So then you would take the rate of the airplane and you would add whatever the wind is doing because it's helping it. Same thing with upstream and downstream or with the current or against the current. They might say it that way as well. Downstream helps, that is with the current. If you're traveling with the current, then however fast your boat is going plus however fast the current is going is what's gonna happen. But if you're going against the current, it's gonna be working against you, okay? And so these are some terms that we're gonna use going forward in these word problems when we set up this first type of word problem. So let's look at number two. It says, when his Sunday school class went canoeing, Brent paddled 12 miles down the river in three hours. After paddling back upstream for two hours, he had traveled four miles. How fast does Brent paddle in still water? What is the rate of the current? Okay. So we're going to do a rate, time, and distance just like we did before. So we're going to set up our little chart and we are going to do rate, time, and distance for our chart. Um, so I usually do it something like this, right? I have two options here that I'm gonna have. I have a rate column, I have a time column, and I have a distance column, okay? And so I'm gonna label these. I have a rate, I have a time, those two multiplied together equals my distance. We have when he is going um, downstream. It doesn't tell us that he's going downstream, but after paddling back upstream, so we know the original, he's probably going downstream here. And then he's going upstream here. All right. If he's going downstream, then how fast the boat is going plus how fast the current is going is going to be his rate there. If he's going upstream, we're going to take how fast the boat is going minus the current there, all right? And you can use X and Y, just label it. So my B is representing the, the speed of the boat and my C is representing the speed of the current. All right, so if you use X and Y, make sure you label it somewhere so that you don't confuse yourself as to which is X and which is Y. All right, it says, he traveled downstream for how many hours? Well, they told us it took him three hours, right? That's his time. Distance, well, we know his distance as well. It says he traveled 12 miles down the river. They didn't say downstream, but down the river we're gonna assume is downstream, 12 miles. So we have his entire downstream filled out. The rate is gonna be how fast the boat is going plus the current. The time is three hours, they told us. The distance is 12 hours, they told us. All right? After paddling back upstream for two hours, we know his time upstream. He had traveled four miles. We know his distance upstream. Okay, so we basically have what we need here to solve this problem. We have to multiply across. So I have to multiply these two columns, and they will equal that column. Now, when you multiply a group, you have to put parentheses around it. So I'm going to say B plus C times 3 equals 12, and B minus C times 2 equals 4. Now, here's the thing. You could distribute, and then you could simplify this if you wanted to after that. But at this point, if everything is divisible by this guy on the outside, I'm going to go ahead and divide him over. 
all right? So I am actually gonna take that top one and I'm gonna divide by three. And I'm gonna take that bottom one and I'm gonna divide by two. I'm gonna divide it out. It's just a group multiplied by three. So I'm gonna divide by three. So think of it like this. I can say, well, I have a group times three. I'm just gonna divide both sides by three. Group times two, I'm gonna divide both sides by two. As long as I do it to both sides of the equation, I'm fine. So now what I have is I have this um, equation here on the top. I just have a B plus C on the left because I divided by that three. 12 divided by three on the right gives me four. This equation now, I divided that two out. I have B minus C, those canceled, and now I have four divided by two, that equals two. Does so everybody see how I got to this point, all right? So if it's easily divisible, I'm gonna go ahead and get rid of it. I'm gonna get rid of it. Now I can solve these two by either method. I can solve by elimination or I can solve by substitution. And let me tell you something, if you have a current, you're always gonna have a plus or minus of the same one. So you can see that the, this is why I solve by elimination here, because I'm always gonna have this guy that can eliminate very, very easily, all right? And so I would solve this particular one by elimination. I would say, well, I can just add these two. B, 1B plus 1B gives me 2B. 1C minus C cancels out. 4 plus 2 is going to give me a 6. And then I have something very easy to solve. Divide both sides by 2. B equals 3. What did I solve for? the speed of the boat. So I know that the boat is going three miles an hour. How do I solve for the current? We'll go back to either one of these. Three plus current equals four. How fast is the current? It's one mile an hour. So I actually can get both of these by doing that, all right? So when you see going against the current, going with the current, you're going to set it up just like this. You're going to set it up just like this. <laughs>
with or against the wind? Against the wind would take longer. So we're going to assume that if it took four hours to fly the 1,800 miles, he was going against the wind, since on the way back, it only took him three hours, right? And so you're going to do the same thing, but now we have a rate and a time and a distance for the airplane. And now we're going to be talking about wind conditions. So we're going to do the same thing for this that we did on the first example. We have um, our rate, our time, and our distance. And we're going to say with the wind and against the wind. All right. So against the wind should take longer. Against the wind is that four hours. And his rate is going to be the airplane minus the wind. It's hurting him. With the wind should take less time. That's our three hours. And his rate is going to be adding the two. The distance, though, from there and back is actually the same. And so that's what this looks like right here. It's the same distance. All right? So in this case, we're going to set it up the way we did the first one. Multiply your rate and time. Multiply your rate and time. And once again, if you can divide it, divide it out, which you can. Both of these are divisible. I'm going to divide these before I ever start. All right. So I have my with the wind 1800 divided by 3 is 600. And I have my against the wind 1800 divided by 4 is 450. And then once again, solving by elimination is all set up for me. My W's will cancel. A plus A is 2 times A. 600 and 450 is 1,050. And then I can divide to figure out how fast my airplane was going alone. To figure out what my wind is, I'm just going to plug it back in. I'm going to say 525 plus what equals 600? And you'll see that your wind is 75. So you're going to see this pattern start happening as you do these.
This is a common one you'll see, especially on like standardized tests. So Kristen and Nicole each improved their yards by planting rose bushes and ivy. They bought their supplies from the same store. Kristen spent $64 on two rose bushes and 14 pots of ivy. Nicole spent $142 on 11 rose bushes and seven pots of ivy. What is the cost of one rose bush and the cost of one pot of ivy? So you start seeing I have two variables here. My variables are my roses and my ivy. You can use whichever ones you want. I wouldn't necessarily use an I because those look awful lot like ones when you start putting them into equations. All right, so if you use a variable, label your variable so that you know what we're talking about. And then we're just gonna say, what happened here? Well, Kristen, we're gonna start with her. She spent $64 on two rose bushes and 14 pots of ivy. So she bought two roses. There we go. That's how we say two of those and 14 ivies, and that total was $64. We're gonna do the same thing, Nicole. Nicole spent 142 on this, 11 roses, seven pots of ivy, and that was $142, okay. A couple things here, you can multiply by anything and you can divide all the way across. So you could, if I'm solving this by elimination, I could take the second one and I could multiply by negative two. How would that help me? Well, if I multiply this by negative two, it gives me negative 14, positive 14, it will cancel, all right? But something else I kind of notice about this is all of these are divisible by two. So as opposed to making my second equation bigger, I could actually make my first equation smaller because I could actually divide this first equation by negative two. So it's, it's basically just doing this, multiplying by negative one half. Fractions are not something that people like to do, but I'm just talking about dividing by two here. So I could say two divided by negative two, that gives me a negative one X. 14 divided by negative two gives me a negative seven Y. And 62 divided by two gives me a negative 32. So you can see how that's actually easier than multiplying the bottom equation, right? So I just took this whole thing, multiplied by negative one half or divided by negative two, it's the same thing. I will say once I've done it and I've rewritten this equation down here, you may want to just for your own sake, just do something like that. So that we don't accidentally get him confused with anything else we're doing. We've actually already taken care of that guy by dividing everything by negative two. And so now I'm really just concentrating on these two and adding those two together, right? And so just make sure you're not hurting yourself in your own work. So I'm gonna say a positive 11 and a negative one give me a positive 10X. Um, seven and negative seven actually cancel, which is what we wanted here. Then I have 142 minus 30. So that's going to give me 110. By the way, if you get a negative number for how many roses you purchased, you did something wrong in the process. Okay, so these are all going to be logical answers. All right, your, your planes and boats should be going a logical speed and your units for something that you're purchasing should be positive, right? Because we don't have a negative amount that we're going to purchase. So if you get something like a negative, probably did something wrong. X equals 11. The reason I label my stuff is so that I remember what I was talking about. That means I purchased 11 roses. So I know the answer to my rose. To get the other one, I can plug it into either one of these. I would actually probably go back to this one right here for him because he's probably the easiest. So negative one times my X minus seven times my Y. Negative 11 equals neg uh oh minus 7y equals negative 32 added over negative 7y equals negative 21 divide by negative y equals 3 that tells me i bought three ivs 